Welcome to the Daily Race. I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad that you're joining us. I'm glad you're being intentional in your relationship with God by spending some time with Him each day and spending some time in His Word. And I love being able to do that together. Uh, we are continuing our study in the book of Colossians, this letter that, that Paul wrote to this church in Colossae. And uh, he's writing it in order to correct some, some false teaching that is getting into the church. Now, we haven't gotten to that part of the letter yet. It's an introduction. Uh, but now he's going to begin <laughs> laying down a foundation. And what's this foundation? It's Jesus. Jesus is the foundation. So any correction, any bringing back to truth starts with Jesus. Uh, that's the area that people were getting confused about. That's the area that false teaching was sneaking in. This this question uh, asked during this time and then still asked it, who was Jesus? Who was Jesus? Was he a great prophet? Was he a good man? Uh, was he a great teacher? Or was he God? Was he God? Uh, that's the, the fundamental question here. And that's um, what Paul is addressing here today. For Colossians 115, it says this, Christ is the, in, is the visible image of of the invisible God. Let me say that again. I think it's just a great summary statement. Christ is the visible image of the invisible God. He existed before anything was created as supreme over all creation. For through him, God created everything in the heavenly realms and on earth. He made everything we can see and the things that we can't see, such as thrones, kingdoms, rulers, and authorities in the unseen realm. What Paul is doing here, and he's taking back to the divinity of Christ, that Jesus is God, that Jesus didn't come into existence with his earthly birth. At Christmas, well, that first Christmas morning, when Mary gave birth to, to Christ, that wasn't the beginning of Jesus. Christ, God the Son, has always existed. He is the visible image of the invisible God. So this language is very helpful because it helps us understand why sometimes we point to uh, God being present uh, in visible form in the Old Testament. So for example, we have the, the burning bush. God is speaking through the bush. That's God the Son, the visible image of the invisible God. And we see other examples of this. Uh, a great one is when Jacob is wrestling with God. You know, as Jacob is uh, going back to the promised land. He's going back to uh, be able to, to have his family there in the land that God had promised Abraham, that his, you know, his grandfather Abraham. Uh, he actually wrestles. He's wrestling with a man. <laughs> I'm sorry. Wrestling, wrestling with a man all night. And when he gets up, he says, I have been wrestling with God. This is, this is Christ, uh, the visible image of the invisible God. Uh, we see this throughout when Abraham and Sarah are visited uh, by the, a lot of times it's the, the angel of God uh, is, is its uh, kind of reference there, but it's really meaning a visible presence of, of God himself. I say this not to bring more confusion to it, not to make the point about these Old Testament uh, incarnations of Christ before his birth, but just to drive home this point that Paul's driving home is that Christ has always existed. Uh, Jesus is God. So all of this confusion about was he a great teacher? Uh, was he really, was he just a prophet? Was he just someone we should, should listen to? Uh, but should we worship him? Is, is, if Jesus is God, then we worship him as God. Uh, if Jesus was God, then he has the authority to conquer death and sin. And when Jesus rose from the dead, it, it proved that, that he was God. This is such a fundamental question. This is really kind of our, um, our litmus test when we talk to people uh, about their religions, right? We can have talks about people that have faith and a belief in, in God. But when it comes down to it, what do you believe about Christ? Was Jesus God? And if the answer is no, then we're not talking about the same thing. We're not worshiping the same God. That, that is a different religion. It's, it's not just a... A, another form of Christianity. It's not just a, another denomination. It is something completely different. Um, and that's what, what Paul is driving down this point here as he's beginning this letter. The deity of Christ. Christ is God. He has always existed eternally in union. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. 
and everything else moves from this point forward because without the divinity of Christ, salvation has no power. Without the divinity of Christ, Jesus was just a good teacher. Without the divinity of Christ, he is not worthy of our worship because we only worship God. He's really driving this home here, and that's essential for us. That's essential for us as followers of Jesus, that we're not just following a good example of how to live. I mean, was Jesus a good example of how to live? Absolutely. Of course he was. He was perfect, but he was God. He's worthy of our worship, not just a good moral example. That is a great conversation to have with people who are, are confused about that. Not to be divisive, not to try to, to tear down, but just to say, hey, this, I believe that Jesus is God. I believe that Jesus uh, is worthy of our worship, not just a moral teacher, <clears throat> but God himself and has always existed. And that's the difference in, in what we believe. We can still be, you can still be a good, <clears throat> I'm sorry. Uh, that's the distinctive. All right, let, let's go ahead and just pause there a little bit. Um, Maybe there's someone you know that, that's been struggling with this, or maybe you've been having an ongoing conversation with someone of, of a different faith and not quite sure how to, how to communicate your distinctive. Our distinctive is Jesus. Our distinctive is, his, is God coming down, the visible image of the invisible God coming down here on earth, dying on the cross. Anything outside of that, we're talking about different things. All right, let's go ahead and pray. Let's go ahead and start our day. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we, we come to you this morning and we, uh, we thank you. We, we thank you that you loved us so much that you came down here on earth, that you gave up all the worship and the privileges, uh, the continual 24-7 honor and glory to humble yourself and take on human flesh, to be 100% human and 100% God. You didn't leave any of your divinity behind you, but you displayed it. You displayed it in your love and your compassion. You displayed it in your power. You displayed it uh, by rising from the dead. And we, we stand in faith with that. We, we, we trust you because of what you've done for us. And God, we just know that, that everything else is built off of this. You are, you are not worthy of us just following your example, although you certainly are, but God, you are worthy of our praise. Jesus, we worship you. We love you. We thank you for everything that you've done for us and our desires to, to give our lives to you. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. All right. Well, hey, I hope you have a great, great rest of the day. I look forward to seeing you 24 hours from now right back here on The Daily Race. Love you guys.